What's going on, y'all? Uh, my name is Jamil Matheny of JMAP Tech, and welcome to today's video. Uh, today, I wanted to talk about, uh, is technology bad for us? Now, I, um, I have a, uh, a book here. Uh, it's actually by the New York Times, and basically it uh, discusses um, the effects of where humanity can go with technology and where it's um, where it's already been basically with that said um, and plus I also have um, a couple of other articles that I want to share with you um, about you know where technology has been you know and the effects on humans um, in general currently all right so with that said let's begin today I have a article based on the arguments against technology. So let's start there. Now, um, I wanna share, uh, share this article with you um, regarding the opposition against technology. And so, uh, the, contrary to humans, it basically says, uh, technology erodes human character. It separates us from nature, which diminishes our natural self. Out of touch with nature, we behave selfishly and uh, stupidly. We become consumers instead of receivers, basically artificial. Uh, you can kind of see that with TikTok, you know, some of the social media platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and you know, um, things like that. Um, you know, I think, you know, the, you know, it's it, it can be a bit self-destructive, um, depending on how you use it. Um, if you're using it for this purpose, fine, you know, uh, but if you're using it for, you know, just constantly scrolling, yeah, uh, you probably, I don't know if you're going to get anywhere in life. So, you know, uh, technology itself, um, you know, it basically says uh, technology proceeds so fast it is going to self-destruct. Uh, self it is no longer regulated by nature or humans and cannot control itself. So I think they're talking about like robots. Um, <laughs> uh, there's a, a thing in computer science, it's called Moore's Law. And you know, I think we've, in my opinion, I think we've kind of surpassed Moore's Law um, in that regard, like, you know, because um, you know, because yeah, you have the television, then you had the computer screen, uh, years later, then you had, um, you know, now you've got, you know, computers built like this machine here, um, it's talking like Sophia or, you know, um, you know, it, it's, it's gone beyond Moore's law. It's gone beyond, you know, the things that, and w which is great. You know, in some, um, in some, uh, in some way, but you know, it can. It, I I think it depends on the the people using it. You know how it's being used uh, and things of that nature. But um, yeah, it's a pretty um, pretty good article here. And also, I have another article. Um, Is technology bad for you? Now this one touched base on the um, the constant scrolling that I was basically um, talking to you about. So um, you know this one basically describes uh, distractions on you know smartphones and you know things of that nature, um, which it can be addictive. You can you know text and drive and doing all this stuff, and I've seen quite a few people do that. Um, you know you. Sh really shouldn't um if anything especially like texting and driving looking down or you're at a stoplight and you're texting somebody real quick you know they have um you know voice commands now voice commandments you know that you can just say hey you know or you know um call out siri or somebody like that you know um you know you've got alexa and you know you've got Plenty of other options besides just picking up the phone and texting someone. So, you know, and then there's Bluetooth. You know, you got, um, you know, Bluetooth earpieces. Um, 
so yeah, that's a distraction. I've actually, um, you know, taken off the notifications from my phone, you know, taking off notifications, doing a lot of, um, you know, just like, you know, things, uh, deleting some apps. Um, you know, if I've even said this to my family members, like delete some, some of those apps, like you really don't need those apps, you know, to begin with, like, I'm not going to say any of those apps, but you know, you know what I'm talking about. If you're on there and you don't have that much space on your phone to begin with, you don't need those apps. You don't need those apps. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, uh, let's go down the list. Uh, too much screen time. Okay. Yeah. Th this is a big one because it's kind of, remember, you know, your parents telling you, Hey, don't watch too much TV. You know, I mean, it's basically the same thing. You know, you're watching the screen, you know, um, and it's, you know, kind of preventing you from, you know, being out in nature, being out outdoors and things like that. My opinion, you have to have balance. You have to have balance. I, I even see people outside. Okay, you're outside. Um, you know, put your phone down. And I don't mean to sound like Erica Badu. I can make you put your phone down. Remember, well, I don't know how old you guys are, but when I was a kid, we went outside. <laughs> we went outside, you know, and enjoyed the fresh air. We thought phones were just, you know, brrr. Other than that, if you're using some dial-up internet, you know, put your phones down. Get outside. Uh, security. Um, yeah, the loss of privacy. Uh, everybody's on social media, everybody's got their name out there, and, you know, it's like, people can spy on you so easily, it's ridiculous, you know, even your email, like, and I actually recommend getting some type of, um, I used to work at a call center, and so, you know, and I would personally recommend to those people, especially like a lot of older people that were in the military and uh, things like that, I would recommend them to get Two apps, <laughs> LastPass, which is a password manager that you can store all your passwords, all your usernames, and pretty much anything else that you use online in one big giant vault, you know, so all of it will be locked in. And another one is uh, LifeLock. Uh, LifeLock uh, basically stores um, or, and protects your, uh, your identity online. So, uh, meaning your identity, well, actually your natural identity, like your social security, um, your credit, you know, history, your, um, all that stuff. So I would definitely sign up for those two, um, to, if you need to add a protection, there's other companies like Experion and all that, 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 uh, basically lock your credit and, you know, uh, you know, and all sorts of things too. Um, but definitely security is where it's at. If you want security, like an added layer of security um, to avoid getting your email or your credit card information on the dark web or anything like that, definitely check out LifeLock or Spirion and get LastPass. I personally use LastPass um, and it basically, you know, yeah. It, it, it works wonders uh, because I don't remember all of my passwords and stuff like that you know unless you have a book um, you know I'm too busy to even even really think about writing down my passwords and stuff like that which you know I should in case my computer goes out but luckily for me I know how to repair my computer um, but if you don't I will recommend doing both you know, just food for thought. Uh, AI. Whew. Now, here's where <coughs> this book comes in. This is actually by the New York Times. I don't know if you can see that here. Uh, this is actually by the New York Times. It's on artificial intelligence. Um, and the I've been to California. I've been to um, Silicon Valley and, well, the San Francisco area, the Bay Area. And, you know, seen... Uh, self-driving cars you know the the whole nine and, and everything with the Tesla um, factory in uh, Fremont California 
Uh, it's a huge factory in Fremont, California. Well, it, I guess it was, but now uh, Elon Musk <laughs> decided to move to Texas because, yeah, it's quite expensive out there. But um, with um, artificial intelligence, with the algorithms that are pretty much on here now, with YouTube, they talk about the YouTube algorithm and things like that, which, by the way, you should subscribe to my channel. That way I can get into the YouTube algorithm, help me out, help you guys out, because I want to provide content to y'all. So anyway, the YouTube, um, it was not the YouTube, but the algorithm within AI, using it for voice commandments, using it for chatting, um, and things like that, it can be useful and it all can be detrimental. Uh, psychologically detrimental if you're using it for let's say you're you're talking to yourself and you're just lonely and you're talking to a chat bot basically you're talking to yourself but it's kind of like a human thinking interaction going on personally I still like talking to humans when whenever I can <laughs> You know, I don't think, you know, the, the the fix, I don't think that's the end all be all fix to, you know, social interactions. Um, and it, this is coming from somebody that loves tech, you know, I don't think that's the, the end all be all because people are different, you know, and just that chat bot would be... It, it eventually become a nuisance. There was actually a movie, and I forget which movie it's called, but um, it was basically about a guy that just, you know, he just, he just couldn't, you know, getting to, you know, dating, and you know, he looked like a giant nerd and everything. But he went to this video store. This is uh, a movie about, you know, the time of the time of the movie. In the movie was in the '80s, mind you. So he went to the movie store, the video store, um, to get a VHS tape. Um, and it was called like his uh, best friend or something like that. I think that's what the movie was called, but not, don't, don't quote me on it. Um, and then he bought the tape home and he literally became best friends with this tape. And then he actually tried uh, real life dating and yeah, that whole thing just plopped and failed. And yeah, you'll have to see the movie, but um, yeah, <laughs> it was ridiculous. Um, you know, and I enjoy sci-fi movies and stuff like that. You know, the reason um, why I got into tech was really, so it, it kind of dates back to, um, you know, watching Star Trek, to, you know, watching sci-fi movies, um, and even Marvel, Marvel movies, you know, Marvel, uh, Black Panther has definitely uh, inspired me, you know, when they showed the lab and, you know, all the scientific stuff like that. Um, back in the day, um, even still now, Bill Nye, the science guy, um, you know, stuff like that always intrigued me. So, you know, I was always interested in science anyway, but I didn't want to do all the, you know, the, the lab, you know, chemistry type of stuff. Um, but tech was pretty much my ideal thing. Uh, yeah, so AI, in my in my opinion, um, <clears throat> let me go back to uh, this article. In so it basically says AI took a look at lung cancer tests and it basically uh, describes. Um, according to this article in um, the New York Times, it uh, tested against 6,716 cases of known diagnosis. Uh, the AI model was 94% accurate. Uh, yeah. And that's pitted against six expert radiologists with no prior scan was available the system beat the doctors. So, in this sense, you know, if you want to talk about, you know, computers are doing this to people, well, what are people doing with the computer? 
you know what are people doing with the computer um, you know what are what are you doing with your smartphone are you using it to work or are you using it you know just to do this number you know um, and just constantly scrolling um, so you have you have to kind of you know reevaluate the usage of you know how are you using any machine you know in my home I have a um, smart devices um, you know the ring um, you know Alexa and all that stuff so that's to help you like it's to help you know you as a person to en kind of enhance your life you know and make it a little easier not say comfortable but you know you know if, if you're after set goals and stuff like that you definitely don't want to be too comfortable but you want to have some level of comfort I mean that's just you know natural human nature you know yeah you want to have some level of comfort nobody wants to feel uncomfortable all the time but yeah you want to have some level of comfort um, it's just like with if, if you want to say you know too much screen time look at people back in the day when they were watching too much TV you know um, you know so there's there's a number of things that you know it really just depends on you know the content that you're watching you know um, and what you're doing with you know your smart device or a smartphone or whatever um, you know if you're just sitting there constantly playing games then yeah you're probably wasting a lot of time now these phones do have um, and the reason why they're called <laughs> smartphones is because yeah they do have smart like capabilities and things like that but you know a lot of people tend to um, uh, you know bypass all of that you know because you can actually um, disable some of the notifications the if you put your phone on a uh, power saving mode it can actually and you put it on the charge you put your phone on the charger it can actually tell you when that charge is actually complete completed and it's ran to its capacity because you don't need to charge your phone all all night you know like most people do and then use it as a an alarm clock if you just get an alarm clock <laughs> hey there's smart alarm clocks now so you know there's that as well but um, yeah, I, I definitely wanted to touch base on um, you know this book and you know uh, just kind of throw up my opinion on you know um, why technology is it can be useful, but is it bad? Just like with anything, there's balance in anything. You know, you have to find a balance. You know, you have to find that sweet spot. You know, for you and your life. You know, I use technology. You know, I have my, you know, grand Dior computer, you know, with decked out, you know, specs and everything. And, you know, I enjoy it, but I use it for 3D art. I use it for, I don't really play too many games on it. I have an Xbox for that, <laughs> you know. And if I wanted to, yeah, I can play games, which is, it really runs very powerful on this machine compared to the Xbox because of the graphics. But, you know... If I want to play a game, I can. I'd rather play it on the Xbox. That's just my. That's just my opinion. But um, you know, if you like this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I will have more future videos uh, later. So with that said, peace.